Hello everybody, welcome back to another StarCraft 2 video by Conunger. So today is actually not a StarCraft 2 video, today is going to be our major update. Now we have several things that um, we're going to be going over. Um, first of all, I just uh, built my new computer yesterday, so I'll be showing pictures of that, linking the builds and what have you, um, going over some of the specifications of that. I've also went ahead and took pictures, so we've got those as well. I'm going to go over um, something that's not gaming related. I also got me a new electronic cigarette that I'm going to go over as well since for those that watch if you smoke I would suggest going into this and I do y'all see me vaping all the time so I'm just going to talk about that for a few minutes and then the one last thing I'm going to also mention is the loot crate so um, we'll actually start with the loot crate so something I've been doing the past two months it's there's loot crate for 15 roughly 15 bucks a month if you do a monthly subscription you get a little bit of a discount off the price but they will put together these small boxes and add in lots of fun geeky stuff and then mail them out to you once a month each month has a theme and that theme will dictate what you get so anyways uh, last month was adventure and that's where I got the Zelda stuff some of y'all saw the Zelda shirt that I was wearing as well as the Zelda bottle opener which is the it's dangerous to go alone here take this um, from the original Zelda game and it actually has a loot crate symbol instead of the sword on there on my keychain and then the Zelda shirt this month was transform now it was mostly transformer stuff but for some reason they also threw in MLG not really sure how that ties into transform but anyways this is the shirt that came out this month this is the uh, Marty McPrime time traveler I'm not sure if this is a uh, loot crate exclusive like the Zelda one was but either way it's comfortable so I'm not really too, too fond of red but hey whatever um, it also came with a vinyl this one is Bumblebee and an MLG wristband so I've got a razor one around here somewhere but I don't know exactly where it went it kinda disappeared on me so I'm using it in a while it also came with this uh, MLG um, thing it says I get one month free of premium ladder supports, access to the premium online tournament per month, and uh, members only forum, as well as a loot crate exclusive badge. I haven't really looked into MLG too much other than watching some of the uh, tournaments on there, so kind of curious as to that. It also came with some stickers um, of teams affiliated with MLG. You've got Team Envy, Team Curse, and Team Optic, though I don't, other than Team Curse, Team Curse is the only one I know of back from when I was playing WoW. So, um, pretty interesting. I will provide a link in there to that, so if y'all want, y'all would like to subscribe. It's actually really cool. Um, it ships out around, you usually get it around the 20th of every month. And uh, so far, I'm kind of pleased with it. It's, I mean, it's 15 bucks a month, but, I mean, it's kind of worth it. Um, it's not, it may not be stuff that you'd go out and spend 15 bucks on, but with everything that you do get, there's some nice perks in there and stuff that you wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. So that's kind of nice. Uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and transition into the vaping segments. Now, a lot of people here know that I do vape. I switched to electronic cigarettes back when I joined Straight Gaming. Um, Feel Good Miller. Uh, the clan leader from Straight Gaming is the one that got me into it because he was from Miami and I started with the Vapor Shark, just the little Evo uh, with a Pro Tank on it and then just slowly been upgrading. I did go ahead and I've been I've had my eye on this for a while. This is the MCV Mastercraft Vapes. Mastercraft Vapes. Uh, they're out of the Philippines. This is their Panzer mod. Now the Panzer is by far one of the best mods out there and this is actually the Golden Army Edition which is a limited edition. I actually have number 705. Um, not the number I was looking for. I was looking for something with a 15 or a 13 rather because 13 is my lucky number but 705 works out really well because if you go number two letter that's Q O or Q space J which 
are two of my initials, so that works. Um, I've also got a Patriot that I've drilled out with six holes. There's three holes on each side, and the way they're formatted, two and then one over, it creates a cyclone effect where the air gets twisted and like pulled up to the top. And then I'm using a two puffs drip tip with the adjustable airflow on the drip tip as well. So all in all, lots of airflow. Um, very, very, very low voltage drop on this thing. Um, I just went ahead and built a new coil. This is a 0.5 ohm. It's just a, a, a micro coil. A dual micro coil comes out to 0.5 ohms. This thing's a beast. Puts out a lot of vapor. Lots of flavor too. Even though I'm using all VG juice. Okay, so now for the main part of the video the what's really going to be interesting about this one so we're going to go ahead and i'm going to switch it over so y'all can see my monitor give me one moment let me try something really quick and we're going to go with the secondary monitor okay so first we're going to go ahead and look at some of the specs this is the new machine i built um, I've been looking at the parts for quite a while and I finally did get it all set up. Parts came in, uh, the last few parts came in Monday and it took me about four and a half hours to do the physical build, my first ever um, home built PC. I do a lot of repair with my dad. Um, I was pretty much raised on computers but this is the first time I've ever actually built a computer from the ground up um, and not had it fabricated usually through Dell. So we went with the AMD FX 30 or 8320 and we have overclocked that so we're running there. We overclocked it to 4.3. We had it at 4.5 but we went ahead and dropped it down just a little bit um, once I do have a full day to really fine tune it because it uh, overclocking and really finding the maximum overclock where it's not uh, not overboard and it's not going to cause any issues but you are getting the maximum performance it does take several hours to get that point so right now I've just got it at the uh, 43 or 4.3 gigahertz so that's running all right we have several parts and I'll go over the parts list here in a minute as well we've got our R9 280 from Asus for our graphics card so that's running pretty good we also have speed fan here to control our fans and check our temperatures so right now our core temperatures at 45 and our GPUs at 48 right so far GPUs the one thing that goes the hottest but all I have to do is switch over to my secondary profile because I've got that set to 75 I don't even have to take it all the way to up to 100 and it immediately drops the temperature um, considerably the CPU whenever I'm running because I've used uh, Prime 95 right here this will go through and it will test all eight cores all at the same time and just put them through a what's called a stress test um, while it's doing that it it can get up pretty high sometimes but usually as soon as you stop that it drops back down to 38 within about 10 seconds so first we're gonna go ahead and pull up the parts list really quick and I will be providing links to all of this information as well so let me go ahead and pull this up let me just switch this over to the primary monitor ah, okay and we're gonna adjust that over so here are our parts list we have the CPU with is the AMD FX8320 for our CPU cooler we went with a water cooling system we used the Corsair 8 H110 we were going to use the NZXT Kraken 61 but it just released yesterday and I didn't want to wait an extra week for it so I went ahead and switched to the Corsair because it does it's already been out and it does have good reviews for our motherboard we went with there were only two that I was interested in the primary once all the um compatibility issues were taken care of. There were only two boards that I was looking at. The Asus Sabertooth 990FX Revision 2 or the Asus, I think it was the Deluxe. Um, but I went ahead and went with the Sabertooth. 
We, for memory, we have 16 gigs to 8 gig pieces of DDR3-1866. For our storage, we have a Samsung 840 Evo solid state drive that's 250 gigs, so we're running all of our programs on that. Previously, in our Alienware, I just had a 60 gig solid state. It wasn't big enough to run the OS and the game, so I chose to run the games off of it. Now I'm running everything off of the solid state with another drive just for data. I stopwatched it. It takes less or it takes 19 and a half seconds. So just shy of 20 seconds from the time I press the power button till I'm in Windows already logged in. That is awesome. So for our data drive, we're using a Seagate Barracuda 3 terabyte uh, drive just for lots of storage. I do um, a lot of media so uh, I can really use the storage. My one terabyte drive is already completely full. I've had to delete stuff several times. I won't have to do that for quite a while. We have the Asus Radeon R9 280, which, is, which has three gigs of dedicated VRAM, which is really nice. For our case, we use the NZXT Phantom 8530, which is black. And uh, we wanted to keep the Razer theme, so we went ahead and got the green lighting, which I'll get to here in a moment. We've got our power supply. We went ahead and went with the NZXT for the power supply since... Why not? Um, so we got just a 550 watt. The estimated wattage here is four, uh, 453 at max usage for all of these components. And I've got the 550, so I have room there. We got a Blu-ray reader from LG. We went ahead and just kept with Windows 7 Home Premium. Um, I was kind of on the b fence about whether or not I wanted to upgrade to Windows 8 or not. I've With Windows operating systems, it's always hit or a miss. Every other operating system is good and every other operating system is iffy. Um, Windows 8 is the iffy side of things. I've heard a lot of good things. I've also heard a lot of bad things. So I went ahead and just stepped, kept with Windows 7 Home Premium and I will go ahead and upgrade whenever the next one comes out. Whether it's 9 or it, they give it some odd name like XP or Vista or what have you. And then the one last thing we added in there was the NZXT Hue, which is their LED controller, which you'll see in pictures here in just a moment. So now that we've got that set up, we're going to go ahead and pull this over. Yeah, I'll drop that. So we went ahead and took pictures. This is our uh, desk. It's the desk is a little bit beat up. It's a crappy little Walmart throwaway that I've had for years now I need to upgrade it. That's probably the next thing I'm going to spend money on is a desk and then a decent bed. So anyways right here we have our two Dell 23 inch monitors, our CAC reader for military usage, we have the Razer Armadillo for cable management with our Razer Naga. This is the 2013 edition. We have the Razer Destructor 2 which, uh, which replaced my Razer Scarab. This replaced my Razer Naga Epic. So, the Naga really does come in handy with StarCraft. I started using it when I was playing WoW because I needed the extra keys, and then once I switched to StarCraft, I used the 12 buttons on the side for um, all of my army units, like, or not all of my army units, all of my control groups, plus I have the army units and a few other hotkeys are uh, keybinds on there as well. So this is the Razer Orb Weaver. These are the only two devices I use when I'm playing StarCraft. I don't even touch my keyboard other than to type in chat or good luck, have fun. Um, everything's done off the Orb Weaver. I have it set to the core, which for those of you that do watch my videos, I use the core hotkey setup. I've been using it for almost a year now, and it's just absolutely phenomenal. My hands never move. Um, between the DPI on this mouse, which I believe is like 8400, um, and the Razer Orb Weaver, I never have to... Yeah, okay, 8200 DPI. I rarely move my hands at all. It's all fingers. Um, moving my mouse an inch in any direction gets me completely across the screen. So, um, with the Razer Orb Weaver, I've got the 20 keys and the three modifiers there. It takes care of everything. And then I've got the Black Widow here. I've got five macro keys. One of them is a good luck, have fun macro. That's so I don't have to type it out every game. I just hit it once, and then the rest of them control um, open broadcaster software, OBS. So we'll go ahead and, and just 
typical, I don't even know what type of speakers these are. I've had them for so freaking long. Uh, I think they're, yeah, they're Alltech Lansing. I don't even know if they're still around. <laughs> so, our next one, this is the front inside of the case. I went ahead and put a Razer decal on it here at the top. That is the Q controller for the LEDs. I, it's a red, blue, and green controller, so you have the full spectrum of visible light. And then there's the LG um, Blu-ray reader. It also has a rebut reset button up here in this corner which is easily accessible but not so easily accessible that you will ever hit it unmistakably. These panels right here all you have to do to pop that off to insert a new drive is you just push on that button and it pops right off. Um, so really simple and quick drive management. Next we're going to go into the front. This is the front with it closed. Down here you can see the, I believe it's a 200 millimeter, it's either 200 or 140 millimeter fan that draws the air in. This is the back. We have the fan, we have the power supply, and there's the IO shield for that. We had to use a lower drive bay for our graphics card, and I'll show you in just a minute. The R9280X, if you can see, it's huge. I mean, it comes all the way to the end of the board. Well, right here is the USB 3.0 header for the onboard or the onboard header for the front of the case USB 3.0 slots. So I couldn't have my video card in that top slot, otherwise it would have blocked usage of that. Um, you also see the Corsair H110 right here plugged in. And we've got two logos there. We'll show you those in a minute. And our lighting. This one strand right here is kind of falling down. I've got to uh, fix that back up. It had 3M adhesive on the back of it, but it didn't because it comes up and then jumps back up even further for where the uh, radiator and the fans mount for the top cooling. It uh. It drops down, droops down a little bit, so I got to attach that back up there. So this is this isn't at night, so it's not as bright as it normally would be. Um, I have it fading in and out slowly, similar to the way I did with my Alienware. Um, but this is what it looks like kind of at night. The green lighting does do very well. Here are the logos. I went ahead and threw a Razer logo on there, and then this is the logo for the motherboard, um, the Ultimate Force or what have you. So. I thought it was going to be Republic of Gamers, but I guess that they don't do that anymore. I'm not sure. I haven't really looked into too much because it's been so long since I've gotten a new motherboard. Um, here is at the top. There you can see the two fans for the Corsair. They're actually on the top of the case um, just due to space constraints. So that's all of those. There's that. I went ahead and completed a markup of this on PC Part Picker, so I will provide a link to that, though it may not be up right away. A moderator does have to approve that. So, anyways, that's everything. So I went ahead and covered the uh, Loot Crate, um, my new vaping device, and my new computer. So far, it is running absolutely phenomenally. Um, I've been playing both StarCraft 2 and Battlefield 4, though I haven't played any actual games against um, real life opponents yet. I've only had it up and running for about 36 hours now. Um, I was, I've was i been tweaking settings just making sure everything is running properly and then here in a little bit I will go ahead and start into it. Most likely I may do a little bit of gaming tonight though I think Alexis is coming over so I may not get much time to do gaming. Friday is probably where I'm going to be doing the most of it. Um, Sorrow, my master uh, Zerg coach, will probably be streaming for a little bit, so I'll watch him, and then I will be gaming and streaming at the same time. So, I don't even know if anybody's watching this, because this is actually streaming live right now. I just, instead of just recording, I stream this. So, I'm just kind of curious really quick. Oh, no viewers. Doesn't look like. That's alright. Didn't figure there were. I didn't announce it to anybody. So. Anyway, so that's actually, that comes in kind of nice. And there's not much of a delay on there either. So, anyways, it's been a pleasure, and I will see y'all in the next video, which should be on Friday. Let me go ahead and...